Hello everyone. Uh, in today's session, we will uh, discuss about uh, project accounting, which is a functional topic and uh, we have a project management and accounting module in uh, Dynamics 365 fi Finance and Operations. So, we will uh, discuss about a uh, quotation uh, to build a customer cycle. So uh, that will involve so many, uh, you know, documents uh, throughout the life cycle. Uh, so this is not a formal name. I have just named this whole cycle as a code to build cycle because ultimately you need to build against a project. And the process starts from the quotation. Uh, quotation can be, uh, you know, a new quotation uh, for a new project or it can be uh, a new quotation for an existing project. So uh, we will just start. Uh, with the outline uh, so we'll uh, discuss first of all what is a project uh, what is the definition of a project and then we'll move to what are basically use cases uh, real world scenarios where project uh, can be used and uh, then there are certainly uh, project phases uh, various phases which will we need to discuss about it and uh, later on uh, the next will be create uh, the project quotation We'll briefly discuss about it and then uh, what is a project contract and uh, uh, the, the creation of a project contract and uh, then uh, the work breakdown structure creation and uh, next it will be uh, create project forecast or a budget what what are the significance and what is the difference between both we'll cover briefly and then uh, uh, to create a project so then the types of project will be discussed and uh, then the phase of execute a project uh, will be explained and then the manage work breakdown structures what what are work breakdown structures we we need to define that one how to manage it and uh, then uh, uh, how to manage project forecast and budgets and then uh, of course if uh, the project involves uh, production orders in order to create a finished uh, product so that that can also be uh, discussed and then definitely for a project we need to procure products and services and uh, that is called also a subcontracting and uh, then a purchase orders uh, based upon the projects definitely when you procure uh, uh, products or services and uh, how to process the project invoices will be uh, briefly discussed and then uh, we'll also uh, explain about uh, calculate uh, the cost to complete a project and uh, then what are the methods involving uh, in the calculation of the cost to complete project and uh, definitely analyze the project is very important thing uh, based upon various you know statements just like cash flow and then cash flow in in uh, forecast will also be discussed and then uh, actual cash inflows and uh, cost uh, forecasting uh, may, uh, will also be uh, our topic and uh, also reviewing the cost uh, about the project uh, and then uh, viewing the remaining budgeted amounts definitely if we have allocated a budget so how much is it is consumed and how much is remaining how to view that and uh, also how to view the total budgeted amounts and also we need to uh, see about how to analyze the utilization of uh, the budget and also about uh, reviewing the project statements which is a very important part and then we'll move also to demonstration uh, phase which is very uh, interesting and uh, so let's start with uh, what is a project and uh, we need to define about the project so basically project uh, can be defined a group of activities that is basically designed to provide a service can be to produce a product or achieve a results so there are uh, definitely project need to be uh, with a definite timeline and uh, with a definite uh, you know targets or goals uh, so that can be either uh, a service which we need to render uh, that can also be a project or uh, 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 and about also there can be a finished product which we need to uh, manufacture uh, or to achieve a result so these three can be uh, uh, we can call it uh, as a project uh, which involves the group of activities which uh, which achieve these goals and uh, also uh, project consume definitely resources and uh, also it generates financial results in form of uh, revenues or assets 
so definitely a work in progress accounts if uh, you are accountant you must be knowing about work in progress uh, accounts which are a kind of a balance sheet account and uh, by a balance sheet means that uh, it can be asset liabilities or uh, capital kind of accounts and uh, and when you talk about pnl and uh, that is called profit and loss uh, so profit and loss can be uh, you know revenue or expense account so in this uh, uh, we definitely uh, can be uh, financial reserves uh, need to be generated in a, a project uh, basically in forms of revenue or definitely when there is some investment and you need to generate revenue or if there is a, a building a structure which you need to build and then generate revenue or uh, you can build your own assets as a part of a, if you are a company and you want to build your own uh, um, you know mall shopping mall or plaza or any kind of such asset or a machinery uh, that can be your asset so that uh, that is also possible and uh, what are the use cases basically where the project accounting uh, uh, is used so <clears throat> we can say that uh, for example a set of actions which are performed to resolve a ticket received in a call center that can be a project and def definitely <clears throat> similarly activities performed by a consulting company say management technical consulting or advertising agencies are also referred to a project normally when you also implement erp project or uh, certain you know technical software development project or can be management of something management of construction project or can be advertising a new product or a new service that also can be a marketing project so <clears throat> that is also defined a uh, third point that uh, in marketing when you come uh, perform a campaign campaign means uh, activities of marketing when you uh, publicize your uh, products or services uh, and you target a specific market uh, of uh, potential uh, can be uh, you know uh, opportunities or uh, uh, can be a potential customer so uh, or leads these are when you uh, get a specific you know hint from your already customers or from market that uh, these are potential customers this this market we need to target so that can also involve a set of work that must be uh, carried out that can be like poster or uh, can be an electronic campaign or can be anything which you uh, can use to publicize your product or service and then uh, definitely a production order uh, production order is for manufacturing of uh, you know certain fine product or finished product uh, which also involve uh, various work uh, that is called also route uh, a recipe uh, that is involved in order to complete a finished product so that is also called a project based manufacturing and the uh, projects involve you know definitely it needs some uh, uh, some things like resources our main ingredient schedules are also possible because there are uh, certain uh, uh, men which you need to uh, involve in that pro uh, project and uh, also can be machinery or uh, work center which you need to involve so there those i mean how uh, the schedule of uh, uh, these work centers which can be human being or machines uh, are available or not available already working in some other projects uh, so definitely and what are the target dates which we deadline dates which we need to achieve so schedules must be involved there and then uh, definitely the cost of uh, project is very important because if it is uh, in order to revenue generation then uh, definitely uh, if there is no margin then what is the use of a project so uh, in order to have a tight control over the cost so that is also main ingredients and then definitely project management and accounting functionality uh, is also definitely a main part where, where uh, which helps or supports you in planning execution or controlling and analysis of these projects so these are various stages uh, like initiation planning and execution uh, monitoring and controlling and then closing uh, closing of a project which is definitely a pmp approach and uh, planning execution and controlling and then analysis of uh, analysis of statements financials uh, how we have earned the revenue how we have controlled the cost if there was budget or forecast involved so what what are i mean those figures or those kpis so on the right hand side in the figure you can also see the same uh, reflection of what we have discussed there is a ticket 
definitely uh, there is a ticket and then uh, which is received from call center and then that ends up in a project similarly a legal mat matter uh, legal aspect which uh, uh, definitely is a matter and then uh, that can be a project as well and then advertising or construction which involves various jobs and those jobs are part of project and similarly manufacturing activities which end up in a product order or production order which can also be a project and similarly a campaign uh, which is done in during marketing that can also be a project and uh, similarly a consulting project uh, or accounting uh, uh, accounting activities uh, also can involve a project so this is the overall uh, you know scenario or use cases and what are basically uh, the project phases we, uh, here in a project management accounting module basically these are initiate project execute project and analyze project basically it is uh, a consolidation of uh, almost of, uh, there are five uh, you know phases normally when you talk about pmp uh, that is initiation uh, then there is a planning execution controlling monitoring and then closing so these are uh, you know uh, uh, clubbed uh, together so in this way uh, in our d 3 5 module it is uh, these three phases which we'll cover so initiate the project basically what is uh, uh, this is stage or this phase uh, a project quotation to communicate the estimated labor uh, expenses and material to the customer basically when uh, you are being asked as a company who provides uh, uh, services or uh, products or uh, if it is involved in the construction or any other business which involves the project so definitely a customer will ask you ask your company uh, the sales team normally uh, that will be involved in this uh, they will and then a definitely sales team will also involve procurement if it is subcontracting uh, when you involve vendors so definitely the quotation part will involve multiple departments can involve multiple departments even HR will be involved for labor because if uh, if it is the you know uh, on the company's payroll or it is from vendor who provides I mean uh, the subcontracted uh, labor so that uh, can also be uh, routed from HR then procurement and uh, sales to procurement so <clears throat> definitely a labor expense uh, based upon um, you know services and the materials which will be needed for that project that that will be part of uh, quotation and then uh, what will be recording the billing terms uh, whether it will be uh, billed monthly or based upon uh, time and material so whatever uh, i mean can be a different uh, quotation for different uh, you know sub parts of that project that is also possible and then uh, limits uh, or the scope will be defined uh, recorded uh, in the initiation phase and then agreements in a project contract will be, will be also involved and then uh, you, using a work breakdown structure is basically done to uh, divide your uh, you know the, the overall task into uh, smaller granular uh, you know sub task or sub sub task in order to uh, control uh, more tightly about your costs and expenses so the work breakdown structure will be used to plan and estimate the work basically and uh, also it involves uh, the initiation phase uh, setup of forecasts and budget to guide the project execution uh, you need to define you know what what are your financials and which are available in uh, terms of cash flow uh, in order to run uh, the project without uh, you know definitely without uh, uh, cash or without I mean uh, that it, that is not possible uh, to execute a project so that will be very important uh, thing as well to t keep also tight control uh, so that boundaries of our budget uh, uh, or forecast uh, amounts or forecast uh, you know uh, that is very important uh, otherwise if if your control is uh, not tightened then that can increase your financials so uh, the first step in, in uh, will be uh, in the initiation will be the uh, to create the project quotation so in the initial sales phase of a project basically <coughs> that i told uh, that uh, sales team will be involved uh, so a project quotation basically provides a customer with a non binding offer uh, basically once only customer place a purchase order against that quotation then only it is a you know binding or commitment from customer 
and uh, a quotation can include elements multiple elements uh, that can be items or services which we need to be quoted and uh, also the contact information and if there are trade agreements with uh, <coughs> your customer uh, or there are discounts offered if uh, in case it is uh, uh, on a huge level or big level or uh, certain commitments with your customer the discount will can also be part of uh, uh, or, or if you receive early payments, uh, so that also give cash discount to the customer. And there will be definitely taxes and surcharges which need to be part of uh, quotation. <clears throat> it also involves, uh, you know, to issue a letter of guarantee uh, for a project quotation transaction between your organization and customer. So after the project quotation is created, then you can create a letter of uh, guarantees uh, request for customer and submit it to the bank. After bank has approved the request, the letter of guarantees uh, guarantee is issued to the customer. So that is, uh, you know, guarantee uh, is a commitment also and ba bank will be uh, serving as a part of a referee or, uh, you know, a party uh, which will uh, definitely uh, hold certain uh, you know criteria uh, and uh, that is basically a guarantee kind of uh, thing uh, that um, if somebody who miscommit or uh, uh, the you know the payment are not received or uh, some dispute happen then uh, definitely there will be a letter of guarantee which will uh, provide a commitment uh, by the bank and uh, then definitely create a project contract. Basically, this is uh, when you enter into a contract with customer or any other funding source to complete a project, you must first create a project contract. Uh, and then when you create a project, basically at that time, you need to assign that project to a contract. So a type of project that you create for a project contract determines the method that is used to invite the project customers. So basically, there is a uh, you know uh, if, uh, there is a, a time and material, and you uh, we will uh, discuss about that uh, later in the types of project. So that can be monthly, you know, uh, monthly method can also be possible for invoicing, and there can be on the spot invoicing uh, whenever uh, you have uh, you know done uh, something in the project, some uh, part has been completed, so you need to invoice at that very moment. So then you can uh, modify a project contract and the related project, but you can't change the project type once you have defined it. So this is a very important thing. Once you define a project type and you have started the project, so you cannot uh, uh, change the project type. So creation of work uh, breakdown structure or WBS. Uh, so basically degree of detail, uh, whether on higher level or lower level is defined in a work breakdown structures. And basically, that is also in order to uh, define accuracy. Uh, that is basically required in terms of estimates when you are estimating uh, the service hours or you are estimating the cost. So that level will be tracked through work breakdown structure. And uh, then uh, projects that have very low tolerance for slippages when your revenue or the margin, the margin which you earn basically uh, is very uh, you know narrow or uh, it is not a huge margin then definitely you need to have uh, more tighter control on your uh, you know uh, tasks or the cost so that uh, that will definitely have a very low tolerance for slippages uh, basically in uh, costs definitely and uh, then also schedule if your schedule is increased definitely it will also increase the cost uh, basically, in terms of labor, if you think that if labor is committed and you are uh, the material is not provided, so the labor will definitely will be uh, charging. So it means the cost will increase with the time. So uh, schedule and cost are very important factors in this way, and uh, definitely they require a detailed work bre breakdown structure also, and uh, uh, require diligent uh, tracking of work progress and cost against uh, WBS. And then uh, the project forecast and budget creation. Uh, basically, we uh, can uh, use for forecasting if our organization has operational perspective and focuses on the revenue and costs that are derived from specific transactions. 
so you can say operational perspective means uh, to towards the in depth in depth perspective uh, that involves revenue and cost but if the only financial amounts are involved then we can use uh, budgeting uh, if the company is only uh, talking about you know financial amounts so then of course only the budgeting can be a suitable but uh, operational or more in depth uh, will be through a forecast so each method has its, its own advantages or disadvantages <clears throat> then uh, creation of project basically uh, there are uh, six types of project in uh, d3 5 finance and each project type is uh, set up uh, differently for basically costs and revenue recognition so that is very important and uh, in order to decide uh, when creating a project which type is uh, appropriate for that project so the project type that uh, is chosen is basically dependent on the purpose of project which is, which are now defined here in this slide that uh, uh, basically there are uh, firstly we will compare time and material and fixed price uh, these are customer oriented uh, and uh, time and material is uh, like uh, uh, on various stage uh, various parts of a pro overall project will be completed but a fixed price will definitely define a fixed price at the first stage and uh, definitely that will involve when a project is uh, very definite and uh, it uh, it has a very accurate work breakdown structure so basically time and material uh, in time and material the customer is billed for all costs that are incurred on a project and uh, costs in, include cost for hours expenses items and fees and in the fixed price invoices consist of on account transaction and uh, <clears throat> invoiced are according to a billing schedule that can be a monthly quarterly or six monthly uh, that need to be decided in uh, project contract with uh, you know customer how we have defined in uh, quotation and uh, then it will be part of a contract what are the terms of payment and uh, it is invoice according to that billing schedule uh, in the in the contract and then revenue for a fixed uh, price project can be calculated and posted throughout the project by using the completed percentage method here and uh, alternatively a revenue can be calculated and posted when the project is complete also it means throughout the project uh, by using uh, you know percentage wise completion can be 10 percent 30 percent 50 percent of the project or it can be once the overall project is completed uh, uh, and that can be uh, also by using the completed contract method and uh, and one contract can have multiple projects uh, that need to be in uh, mind and uh, companies can uh, often benefit from using value of the work in process so work in uh, work in process are basically balance sheet accounts and uh, that will keep track about uh, whatever the value of work has been uh, done so far so that can be uh, companies can benefit our, from this work in progress uh, accounts to calculate the degree of completion of a project or group of project and then uh, definitely there are uh, you know certain investment type of project and uh, if we can go to the next there are cost project internal and then there are time project so basically we will first discuss about this investment investment can be for example if the company has invested in uh, some uh, you know uh, land or something you know a plaza or a building or something and uh, it does not produce immediate earnings rather it is more about future or long term internal projects internal means the companies its on, uh, companies uh, itself i mean the company owns these projects uh, whoever i mean uh, the legal entity is so long term internal projects where the cost must be capitalized means uh, work in progress accounts will be used in balance sheet and then in, at the end when the project is completed then those will be capitalized means uh, the asset will be acquired and uh, the balance sheet account work in progress account will be reversed so only cost for items hours and expenses can be recorded for an investment uh, project so then there is a cost in an investment project are tracked and controlled by using estimate functionality and uh, then there is a point can be set up with an optional maximum uh, capitalization and uh, 
second last point is costs are recorded and held in work in progress account until the project is completed on project elimination uh, so uh, that will means uh, uh, finishing it uh, the work in progress value gets transferred to a fixed asset that is a fixed asset will be acquired at that time and the value will be transferred means the WIP will be reversed a laser account or a new project so that uh, that is also possible uh, that will that means uh, without acquiring a fixed asset it the amount can be transferred to a ledger account or uh, to a new project so that is also possible so these are three outcomes either acquisition of a fixed asset or a ledger account transfer or to a new project and then transaction on investment projects uh, will not be shown on the uh, post cost or accrue revenue or create invoice proposal pages so that is for obvious reason because these need to be as an investment uh, project nature wise the cost and uh, you know uh, revenue accrual will be definitely for customers and similarly the create invoice proposal will definitely will be for customers so because these are internal projects so uh, these uh, will not be shown so coming to the next point uh, like cost project uh, being internal project only hours expenses and items can be recorded it is similar to just like investment uh, project uh, so here also only cost for items hours and expenses are recorded so similarly here also only hours expenses and items can be recorded so items are basically uh, used throughout the projects uh, these can be any equipment or anything which is used for the sake of uh, project only so uh, only uh, because of a uh, cost project this is internal project uh, so uh, this uh, only these uh, kind of transactions are possible uh, also there is uh, we can compare the internal project together internal projects are used to track costs on a project that is internal to your organization so internal projects can provide a planning tool to manage resource consumption so that is also similar to this one cost project and uh, transaction on internal project aren't reflected on accrued revenue or create invoice proposal pages this is the same point which we discuss in investment uh, project as well because these are internal so there is no need of uh, you know invoice proposals for a customer or accru accruing revenue for a customer so then uh, in the cost project uh, basically it is a shorter duration investment project uh, investment project when you talk about it so it is a long term as we have defined in the second point long term internal projects so investment is long term and cost project is a shorter duration cost project so that can be a part of a bigger project as well so cost projects transaction are posted only to pnl account because these are cost uh, uh, nature so definitely profit and loss accounts uh, will get uh, impact and uh, the balance sheet accounts will definitely not get impacted just like investment uh, project because in the investment project ultimately we will need to capitalize it or either we need to uh, accrue the revenue uh, or uh, to create uh, uh, no sorry <coughs> basically it will uh, investment project will uh, uh, be used to <coughs> fix uh, to acquire the fixed asset at the end or ledger account uh, will get impact or uh, the amount uh, while eliminating the project will be transferred or a new project so similarly uh, here it will not be the case uh, it will be unlikely i mean it will be ag uh, opposite to the investment uh, since this is a pnl account so it will unlikely uh, be posted to balance sheet it will only post to pnl account or profit and loss account uh, those are basically uh, revenue or expense account and then being internal in nature so there will be no association with customer the transaction on cost projects aren't reflected on uh, post cost accrued revenue or create invoice proposal so this is the similar point in uh, cost project internal as well as in investment However, a customer association required for sales order lines used for managing item requirements which need to be created for purchase orders. Items, uh, item requirement in cost project are created manually since the create item requirement setting is ignored here. So that uh, will be case when you create sales order lines. So that will definitely require a customer association. 
but nature wise overall there will be no uh, association uh, with the customer because it is an internal kind of a project and uh, then we discuss about lastly about internal we already discuss uh, along with cost so time uh, project time project are basically uh, very uh, in low scope uh, project meaning uh, the time projects are used to track time only that is associated with non chargeable and non productive activities such as a project to track sick time for workers or transactions in time project aren't posted to the ledger so only to keep a uh, track of hours for for example uh, sick time for the workers so this is also non chargeable uh, for the customer so instead they are included in work utilization reports only only hour transaction can be recorded in time project so you use an hour journal or time sheet to register these hours to the project after the hours are registered they appear as a project transaction but don't have corresponding voucher transaction mean there is no ledger impact so transactions on a time project aren't reflected on post cost accrued revenue or create invoice proposal page so now we can say that uh, this uh, time is also uh, is associated can be associated uh, uh, to keep track only for a certain activity but uh, this is again not uh, being posted to ledger however uh, similarly the post uh, cost or accrued revenue or create invoice proposals which are definitely for customer will not be recorded or reflected in time or internal or cost or investment project only these will be in time and material or fixed price so that is now clear these are kind of uh, projects and then uh, comes to uh, 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 like assign workers and categories and resources so basically you can schedule worker uh, resources based either on the requirements and schedule of a project or on the skills and availability of worker so this is a basic point that uh, scheduling of work resources on a project will be definitely against some requirements or uh, what are what is the schedule of a project and basically what skill level you require for certain task or whether that worker is available so for that purpose scheduling will be used and uh, also by using the resource scheduling capabilities you can deploy your organization's workers efficiency and effect effectively effectiveness so so these uh, also are provided like uh, the utilize i mean uh, there will be no worker who will be idle and uh, those will be always efficient and uh, will use effectively means the correct skill type will be used in correct task which are, which is required uh, for their task and uh, also we can uh, quickly find i mean uh, through using these uh, scheduling uh, capability of the system who are most qualified workers for that specific task in a project and uh, then also uh, uh, we can also easily see how those worker might be used more effectively during the course of project so uh, these are uh, some of the ways which can be used during resource scheduling functionality uh, in district 5 uh, like for example information about uh, worker attributes can be education skill set certification uh, if the client requires that and definitely legally there will be required for working on a project and then uh, based upon their uh, project experience uh, that will also be uh, available feature uh, in order to match the worker to the requirement of a project and uh, then definitely the information from worker's calendar and availability to match the worker's scheduling to the project cal calendar will be used <coughs> and uh, then we need to review basically the capacity of each worker whether it will be uh, it is underutilized or uh, overutilized so that will be also available in this feature and uh, so also it needs to uh, i mean whether he fits he or she fits uh, uh, in terms of availability and attribute so and then uh, uh, that feature also provides reviewing a worker's availability that uh, uh, basically there are no conflict of that worker with multiple assignments uh, rather in the same time so that also provides i mean uh, uh, reviewing the information like worker utilization in either a uh, uh some review uh, that can be a department departmental view or can be a worker view 
or it can be a detailed view for example uh, worker in a department or by uh, weekly uh, uh, detailed uh, for each worker so that uh, information will also be available in the resource scheduling feature and then also uh, modifying a resource assignments uh, is also possible uh, for various units of time such as uh, can be day week or month to optimize how the workers are used and uh, then comes uh, the second stage uh, after initiation basically the execute the project so in the initiation the planning scheduling and these all uh, uh, will be covered and then in the execute basically uh, during the execution the team members or managers uh, record the work which is being done in the project and also whatever the expenses have been incurred uh, that uh, through what i mean the time sheets will cover the work, work hours and the expenses reports will be there which need to be checked and uh, other business documents which are available so project managers basically have uh, tools which will uh, allow them to monitor the consumption of a budgeted amount for the project and to keep a control over it and uh, project manager can order pick or procure material for uh, required which which are required for the project and uh, uh, that those documents definitely are purchase orders and uh, also other business documents so invoices are also uh, prepared and approved so that the customers are billed for ongoing uh, work whatever the work has been done whether on a scheduled basis monthly basis or on the you know on the spot basis uh, whatever is required and then uh, invoices are generated and the f then finally revenue is basically rec recognized during this process that is execute the project uh, process uh, to affect the organization's financials so basically that is very important part and that is the main part of a project and uh, then also uh, during execution uh, management of a work breakdown structures is done uh, so work breakdown structure already uh, we discuss about it is a description of work that need to be completed in order to complete the project and it is basically hierarchy of various tasks can be very detailed level and can be a brief level based upon accuracy required or in order to control the cost and uh, you know uh, hours or uh, uh, the expenses it represents also not only the work for each hour but also the size i mean in terms of uh, hours can be uh, size i mean how large is the task uh, i mean uh, and then and the cost of the task and how much duration will be required in terms of hours uh, that will be covered in work breakdown structure then uh, there are two things important uh, which controls basically also uh, boundaries or the scope of a project uh, basically for project forecast and uh, project budget so basically as we discussed earlier also forecasting when is used when operational perspective is needed and uh, it uh, focuses more towards revenue and cost so which are basically derived from various uh, uh, specific transactions if it is only for financial amounts definitely then the budget model will be used so then uh, definitely the create production order is required uh, uh, a project related production order is linked to a sales order or an item requirement by using either the finish item method or consumed item uh, method so these two methods can be used in uh, production order uh, and uh, a production or order which is linked with the project uh, is uh, linked to a sales order or basically an item requirement additionally if a production order was created manually there is no link between the production order and the sales order or item requirement so there is no link when it is done manually however the production order when automatically it is created uh, in order to fulfill a sales order or an item uh, requirement so then there will be definitely a link between a production order and sales order or basically an item requirement so manual will no, not have any link but automatic creation of production order will definitely have a link to a sales order or item requirement so the uh, production orders are uh, based upon uh, multiple uh, factors uh, so these can be uh, one of uh, uh, these uh, four 
basically a finish item uh, link to order and finish item no link to order and then can be consumed item link to order and consume item no link to order and uh, in the finish item basically uh, project is linked to sales order or item requirement and when this method is used uh, the project costs are posted when the sales order is invoiced or when the packing slip is updated for the item requirement so cost is posted as a finish item but when there is a no link uh, of finish item to to the order then actually cost can't be posted until the production cycle for an item has a status of ended means the production order has been completed only then uh, the actual cost can be posted and it, that also will be as a single transaction and uh, what about consumed item and link to order and no link to order uh, basically uh, the link uh, uh, is basically uh, project is linked to an item requirement in this case basically uh, the production order is uh, i mean uh, link the project to an item by using this method you can view the actual project cost when the production has a status of started or is reported as finished so we can view the actual project cost at that very moment whenever it is started or it has reported as finished the costs are posted as multiple project item transaction or for raw material and hours consumed for production when packing slip is updated for the item requirement no project costs are posted so you can also define the level in the bill of material hierarchy at which the projects in production order are tracked but in consume item no link to order link the project to an item requirement by using this method you can view actual project cost when the production has a status of started or is reported as finished so it is uh, it is the same status like uh, above but the costs are posted as multiple project item transaction for raw material and our consumes for production you can also define the level in bom hierarchy at which the projects in production are tracked so now the next is procure uh, the products basically or the services which are uh, uh, for the purpose of uh, project uh, the purchase and sale of items are prevalent activities in many project focused businesses definitely without this it cannot be the project cannot be achieved until uh, if the items which are required or if subcontracting is required i mean the vendor the labor from the vendor is required definitely uh, so we need to purchase uh, those services or uh, items and uh, similarly the sale of items are also uh, prevalent activities in uh, in the project purchase order for the project basically here uh, we'll uh, discuss about method purpose and uh, uh, consumption of the items so when you create uh, methods uh, can be like create a purchase order directly create purchase order from a sales order uh, so in that case the sales order will have a link to a purchase order uh, so basically sales order uh, when create a purchase order definitely means we are buying it from a vendor so then also create a purchase order from an item requirement so so then uh, uh the purpose basically in the purpose we can see create a purchase order directly basically in this one purchase items from an external vendor for consumption on a project so and then consumption of items are basically items are consumed when the vendor invoice is updated in this case uh, vendor invoice is definitely updated uh, for a purchase order so that uh, means the items are now consumed and uh, then there is a create a purchase order from a sales order so in this case the purpose is basically purchasing items when uh, a sales order is created for a project so then consumption of item is done uh, items are consumed when the sales order is invoiced to the customer so in this case the consumption is done when the sales order is uh, invoiced or in the previous one when the uh, purchase order is invoice or vendor invoice is updated so at that time the item is consumed in the last method which is create a purchase order from an item requirement basically purchase item when you create an item requirement from a project and items are basically consumed when item requirement packing slip is updated so these all have uh, three different uh, you know methods uh, 
to uh, to represent when items are basically consumed when it is only purchase order so the vendor invoice update uh, uh, the, uh, reflects the consumption of item when uh, there is a link of sales order to a purchase order definitely uh, uh, link with the project that time the sales order invoice need to be updated to uh, reflect the consumption of uh, item and in the last method basically the packing slip for the item uh, requirement need to be updated in order to reflect the item consumption and in the next slide basically we uh, now discuss about the processing of project invoices so project type determines which invoicing procedure should be applied this invoicing means uh, the invoice to customer definitely when we build the customer so uh, there are two only external project type which are time and material and fixed price which need which can be invoiced the other four types like uh, internal investment uh, time uh, uh, those cannot be or the cost type uh, cannot be invoiced to the customer so so only these uh, two project are uh, can be invoiced and these are uh, can be attached to a project contract so fixed price or time and material basically before we can create a customer invoice for a project we need to create preliminary invoice or an invoice proposal in an invoice proposal and this preliminary invoice is similar to pro forma invoice uh, and uh, also the invoice proposal in an invoice proposal we can select the project transaction to include in a project invoice that is up to us which transaction we need to bill to customer and the, those are also available as a type billable or non billable you can then review the invoice details before you post the project invoice and send it to the customer or other funding sources so invoicing can be to a customer or if there are multiple funding sources involved those can be also to for the funding sources and uh, we can uh, review uh, the details uh, and uh, before we can uh, send it and there are uh, multiple types of uh, detail level can be summary level as well uh, those we will see in the demonstration and uh, basically then uh, comes our uh, next slide which uh, is about uh, cost to complete uh, how to calculate that uh, uh, cost to complete a project basically when you create a, an estimate you can choose the method that uh, will be uh, needed uh, to calculate the cost to complete the project <coughs> we need to select a method uh, for this purpose uh, <coughs> cost to complete uh, method field in the cost to complete method field uh, which is available in create estimate page basically and the method uh, that is uh, chosen is applied separately to each cost line in the cost estimate while a line <coughs> has a status of created we can uh, change the method that is applied <coughs> to it on the cost estimate page <coughs> so then there are multiple uh, methods for a cost to complete project can be total cost actual total budget actual remaining budget and as previous estimate and uh, then also set cost to complete to zero uh, from cost template so these are various methods uh, in order to calculate cost to complete a project so first of all total cost actual method what what does it uh, tells us what it explains in this estimated uh, cost are basically manually entered and uh, after the total cost or total quantity column on the cost estimate page is completed the actual costs are subtracted from the user entered totals whatever the manual entered uh, total from the user uh, the actual cost are subtracted from that amount that uh, value so the result will be the cost to complete the project so th that will be definitely for remaining one and typically when when the when in the start definitely it will be full and then in the middle it will be subtracted uh, and it will reflect the actual amount and in the end it will be uh, almost uh, zero typically the progress of cost is in track based on for example the number of hotel stays and meals that are recorded in each period instead tracking is usually based on comparison against the total amount of estimated hours definitely those hours will be uh, reduced uh, throughout the project uh, whatever the total amount were estimated earlier 
whenever those are consumed will uh, be subtracted from this one and the remaining the net value will definitely be uh, decreasing and then this approach doesn't require a forecast model and the total cost or total quantity can be changed manually when a value is entered in total cost or total quantity column finance compares this value against the actual transaction that are posted in the period and then decreases the value in the quantity to complete or cost to complete column and then uh, there is a total budget actual uh, this is also a method to calculate uh, the cost to complete a project and in this method uh, what is done actual costs are compared against the forecast model that you select to determine the cost this method basically used uh, uses a total budget model that includes forecasted transaction to obtain a more accurate view of project you can adjust the budget model when the project is in progress if you must adjust forecast so these process uh, can be followed like uh, we can uh, copy the forecasted transaction into another mod forecast model or we can compare the actual and uh, forecast transactions uh, with each other and uh, then also we can uh, increase, decrease or maintain the estimate for the next period. So basically finance in this method does not automatically decrease the forecast estimates. So in this one uh, is a, a good idea uh, to maintain an original uh, forecast model on the fixed price uh, project basically to establish a baseline for comparison when a project is completed. So uh, under the note, if uh, we are selecting this model, then uh, at least two forecast uh, models uh, can be used. One model should uh, keep the original forecast while, while the other model uh, uh, is uh, in which the forecast transactions are copied. So the method is valid only for fixed prices and investment uh, projects. So only these project type can have this method that is total budget or actual uh, total budget actual method and then there is a remaining budget method in this method uh, basically uses the remaining budget model uh, to basically calculate the cost to complete project and when this method is used uh, the actual cost and forecasted amounts uh, in the remaining budget model are added together and the result is the total cost so whatever the actual cost are there and then uh, forecasted amount those need to be uh, added in the uh, uh, in the remaining budget uh, before we can use this model uh, remaining budget uh, model uh, can be set up basically to deduct the transaction based on the actual transaction that are recorded in the system so on the forecast model page, may, uh, we need to make sure that fields are marked in automatic forecast reduction group. So that those fields need to be marked and then typically remaining budget is copied from the original budget. As transactions are entered, the transactions on the remaining budget are decreased. As the project progresses, if you determine that the remaining budget must be adjusted, you charge forecast transaction to the remaining budget. So this method is only applied uh, uh, when the forecast model is attached to the estimate otherwise it cannot be applied so then comes as previous estimate the same estimate method that was used in previous pre period is applied this method requires a forecast model if the previous period required a forecast model and then there is set uh, cost uh, to uh, set cost to complete to zero and this method is basically used uh, before the estimated uh, estimate of the project is eliminated and uh, this method also matches the total estimates with the actual transactions that were posted and clears the cost to complete column the resulting percentage of completion is always 100% Forecasting field is not selected for each cost line that you create and the total estimate is copied from the previous cost estimate. And in this one, the actual consumption of estimate period is deducted from the cost to complete the project. This method doesn't require a forecast model. Then comes from, uh, from cost template. So cost to complete method uh, in this one 
is set up in the cost template that is associated with the selected estimate project. Then comes the third phase which is uh, after execute uh, basically to analyze the project uh, various financials and uh, it is very basic level uh, project is basically uh, is used to group transaction that are uh, in order to record the cost and then uh, basically posting these costs to the GL. Generally these transactions are results of uh, various business documents uh, can be timesheets, expense reports, vendor invoices or inventory transactions. The life cycle of a project basically uh, starts from estimates then forecast and budget that help planning and anticipating the work and financial impact of the project. As we analyze the project uh, basically uh, we can evaluate not only the transaction that uh, are up happening during the project but also uh, accuracy uh, of definitely the estimates and whatever we have uh, forecasted so the utilization rate of project team members uh, how those are utilized 100 percent utilization 80 percent and then overall uh, basically the success or the achievement of objectives or goals uh, is very important so uh, that is also part of this analyze uh, project and cash flow analyze basically is very important without cash project cannot execute definitely and uh, that need to be monitored uh, and to review basically uh, basically forecasted cash flow and the actual cash flow for a project uh, then uh, it can be reviewed uh, during the project uh, project itself and uh, we can view the cash flows uh, for a completed project as well. Uh, in order uh, by monitoring cash flow, basically we evaluate a single project. Uh, we can uh, use various reports uh, to view multiple projects and also transfer project cash flows to the cash flow forecast in the general ledger. Cash flow forecasting based of, based upon the setup basically we can forecast the cash inflows uh, for a selected project and the example here it is given like a project date uh, is uh, 5th march 2020 12, 2012 and then uh, basically uh, on a monthly schedule if we invoice uh, invoice happens on 31st of uh, march so <clears throat> then uh, the forecast can be as as per below invoice frequency is basically here is monthly so 31st march will be the final date to include all the transaction during the month and the due date is basically uh, mentioned in due in the invoice which can be here uh, for example in this example is two weeks that is 14th april is due date due date and uh, terms of payment basically decide about due date uh, that is 14 days or two weeks and uh, then expected sales payment date is 27th of april and how it is calculated definitely it comes after the due date when you need to pay i mean the customer needs to pay uh, based upon our project so there are two things like one is in contract and one is project management and accounting parameters the general buffer days uh, this is in parameter uh, and in this example uh, like 27th of april uh, three uh, the three days are defined in the parameter uh, project management and accounting parameter the general buffer days field and then individual buffer days are defined in the project contract so that uh, is defined as 10 days so 3 plus 10 is uh, 13 so the, those will be added into the due date uh, that is 14 april and when you add uh, 13 and 14 it will become 27th of april uh, the expected sales payment date so in this way the cash inflow forecasting is uh, happening and here we define basically uh, the general buffer days uh, can either replace the individual buffer days or be added to individual buffer days in previous example these were added but when uh, you need to basically replace the individual buffer days of project uh, contract then we need to uh, enter an average number of days between the due day and the actual payment days for the customer so whenever the actual payment uh, is collected from the customer 
and what is the due date the average of uh, this can be uh, can replace basically the individual buffer days which are defined in the contract to add the general buffer days to individual buffer basically uh, so in that case in general buffer days field enter your estimate for the number of days between the day and the customer changes the payment and the day when your organization receives the payment so that can be entered uh, like whenever they send and we, we receive that can also be a time gap. So that can uh, can be defined in the general buffer days field. And then set up an individual buffer day in project contract. The days are calculated based on both sales invoice due date and your organization organizational experience with the customer payment pattern. So how soon they pay after the due date, they, those can be entered in the project contract itself. Actual cash flow. So in actual cash flow, basically uh, that resembles uh, forecasting, but uh, we can begin our calculation from the first invoice date. Here is an example like invoice date is March uh, 2nd, uh, 2020. 2012 and then due date is March 16, uh, 2012. So the terms of payment are uh, 14 days due to which uh, uh, 14 are added into 2 so that uh, ends up in 16 uh, March so uh, due date and then expected payment date is basically 29th of March. So basically here <coughs> the general uh, buffer days uh, 3 is included 3 plus 10 so 3 plus 10 is 13, 13 is added to 16 making it 29th of March. So this happens when actual, I mean, uh, actual cash inflow happens. <coughs> and what is co cost forecasting now? Uh, based on the days that are defined, the cost payment uh, date can differ from the project date. In this case, the cost payment date is calculated by adding the number of days from the project date to the number of days in the terms of payment. For example, project date of the transaction is March 5th. And the following uh, terms of payment are set uh, like uh, current month, hours are current month, expenses are uh, 14 days expenses, and items uh, for 30 days. Based upon these settings, uh, so the cost payment date for each transaction type will be as per below. So for the current month, so definitely the last uh, day of the month that is 31st of March uh, will be selected here and uh, for uh, expenses uh, March 19 which is basically 14 days after the date of 14 days after the date of the transaction. So what will be the date of transaction basically project date of transaction is March 5th. So in the March March 5th, uh, we will add 14 uh, days to make it 19. And then <coughs> April 4 will be the items, uh, which is 30 days after the date of transaction. So you'll add 30 days to 5th of March to make it April uh, 4th, 2012. So this will be uh, basically cost forecasting. The cost payment date isn't calculated on buffer days, rather. After the project is completed, when all costing and invoicing uh, is also complete, both the cost and sales are posted to the PL account. And when all sales and vendor invoices are completed, uh, we can then view the relationship between uh, fields on cash flow page and the fields on the project statement page. And in the cost forecasting, basically, uh, two pages like cash flow page and project statement page are involved here. Uh, in the cash flow page, we can see cash inflows, cash outflows, net cash flow. And in the project statement, we can see revenue, total cost and basically gross margin. In, in review cost, uh, we can monitor the cost of the organization when it incurs uh, during a project on a cost control page. So by comparing the original budgeted cost uh, for the project with the current actual cost and committed cost, you can determine whether the project is on track over the budget or under the budget. So of course, if it is uh, actual costs are over the committed cost, so it is over the budget. And if actual costs are uh, lesser than uh, committed cost, so 
these are under the budget and if it is matching then it definitely is on track when you use the cost control page to view the current status of project cost uh, then forecast models can be used which are selected for original and remaining budget if we select other forecast model then uh, when we calculate the cost the calculation results will not be accurate So uh, forecast models will be uh, for original and remaining budget in this case. Viewing the remaining and budgeted amounts. If the remaining budget is selected as cost control method on project management and accounting parameter page, so the cost control page calculates uh, basically the costs that haven't been posted as actual or marked as committed. Uh, so specifically the amounts on general tab and lower pane of cost control page are calculated in the following ways <laughs> actual cost committed remaining budget and total cost basically in actual cost the total amount that has been spent on a project for the selected cost line uh, the actual cost amount is calculated on the ledger updates page and what is uh, in the committed cost the additional amount of expenses that the legal uh, entity has committed itself to pay. So, the specific committed cost amounts are calculated on committed cost page and remaining budget is basically amount of uh, original budgeted amount that is still available. Uh, basically, uh, by budget is certainly utilized during project and whatever is remaining will be available. So remaining budget is basically calculated also on GL preview page and then lastly total cost is basically the sum of the actual cost, committed cost and remaining budget amounts. <coughs> then uh, viewing the remaining budgeted amount is basically uh, on the cost control page. Uh, there is a deviation tab uh, where we can view comparison of uh, total expected cost with the original budget. This comparison basically shows us differences between uh, various amounts uh, to show where uh, the data is not matching. This is specifically for accountants. The deviation amounts are calculated in following ways. The original budget, the amount that was originally budgeted for selected cost line, the original budget amount is calculated on GL preview page. Then total cost is basically as we discussed, actual cost, committed cost and remaining budget as reported on general tab deviation is basically the difference between total cost and the original budget so definitely uh, if you subtract the original uh, budget uh, the total cost from the original butter budget so that will be the deviation various variance based on the quantity the total difference between the original uh, forecast and the total forecast so that will be uh, like original average price minus total average price and then multiply it with the total forecast quantity this formula will give us variance based upon the quantity so this will only be applied on a project hours and basically then there will be variance based upon the price which will be applied also uh, on the project hours and that is calculated like original forecast quantity minus total forecast quantity and uh, multiplied by original forecast price so instead of quantity uh, here the price will be multiplied uh, with the difference of uh, quantity so next uh, comes viewing uh, the total budgeted amounts so basically total budgeted uh, total budget is selected as cost control method in project management and accounting parameter page Cost control page basically calculates the actual cost and total cost of a project to help you detect any difference between the two. Means the actual cost and the total cost of the project. So specifically on cost control page, the amounts in columns in lower pane on the general tab are calculated in following ways. Total budgeted cost is basically uh, for a selected cost line and uh, the actual cost is uh, basically uh, when, it, when it incurred uh, during the project uh, to date for the selected cost line and then there is committed cost which is basically 
amount that has been committed for the selected lines and then there is a variance which is basically the difference between the sum of actual and committed cost and the total cost so actual and committed costs are summed up and then uh, subtracted from the total uh, total cost is subtracted from it the variance shows whether additional cost must be specified for the budget and then <coughs> During the viewing of a total budgeted amount on the cost control page on deviation tab, uh, we can view the difference between total budget and the original budget by looking at the following fields. Original budget basically is uh, defined originally for cost line and it is calculated in GL preview page and total budgeted cost uh, that was originally uh, budgeted for the cost line the total budgeted uh, cost is calculated also in general ledger preview page the deviation uh, is basically deviation for cost line and amount is calculated by subtracting the total cost from the original budget so variance based on quantity and the variance based on uh, prices we have already uh, discussed also in uh, this slide and this one was for uh, you know average price and total average price and this one is for budget definitely original budgeted cost price is multiplied by original budget hours minus the total budget hours and variance uh, based on the price is calculated basically uh, on the project hours again uh, that is calculated by original budget hours minus total budget hours multiplied by total consumed hours so this will be the formula for both of uh, these differently then uh, utilization rate is analyzed uh, basically and uh, that is the percentage of time that a worker basically performs uh, billable or productive work in a specific working period definitely we will not be billing any non billable hours only those are productive hours we need to bill to the customer so billing hours are workers hours that can be charged to a customer so utilization rate of a worker is basically billable hours divided by working hours in a period and the percentage of this so if there are 30 billable hours divided by total working hours are 40 means 30 are productive hours out of 40 so we will uh, take uh, take the percentage so it will be 75 percentage of utilization rate when you calculate uh, the utilization rate for a worker we can uh, calculate either the billing uh, billable rate or the efficiency rate so billable rate is basically difference between billable hours and non billable hours or normal hours uh, that will be the billable rate efficiency rate is basically the difference between productive hours and non productive hours or normal hours Productive hours are the hours that the worker spends contributing to a specific project and project uh, productive hours are typically billed to customer except in the case of internal projects. Non-productive hours are never billed to a customer definitely. This is general, generally. Analyzing the utilization basically uh, also involves uh, to calculate the utilization rates on our utilization page. Calculations are based on default preferences. Uh, preferences uh, also specify how hours are calculated by assigning utilization or burden to each project type. This applies to billable rate calculations and efficiency rate calculation. In the utilization hours, those are reported for selected project type are always considered for billable or efficiency utilization. Burden. Burden are hours that are reported for selected project type are always considered for non billable or non efficiency utilization according to line property the line properties of a particular hour transaction determine whether the hours are considered for billable or efficiency utilization not included are hours aren't factored into the calculation of billable or efficiency utilization so these are various uh, you know uh, terminologies which are uh, used in order to specify how hours will be calculated uh, in each of the project type utilization uh, on the hour utilization page besides our uh, overall utilization rate percentage for a work or a project also uh, these uh, different hour types are viewable uh, which are basically used for utilization rate calculation 
like not included hours these are not included hours in our utilization rate included hours definitely are those hours which are included or a burden hours these are included in utilization rate burden hours if uh, we are calculating a billable rate these hours are same as non chargeable hours so burden hours are non chargeable uh, if you are calculating on efficiency rate these hours are same as non productive hours so <clears throat> basically in efficiency rate these are called non productive but in billable rate these are called non chargeable utilization hours are when calculating a billable rate these hours are same as chargeable hours if you, if uh, efficiency rate is being uh, calculated then these hours are productive hours so basically in burden hours non chargeable in case of billable and non productive in case of efficiency rate and in utilization this is opposite means chargeable hours in billable rate and productive hours in efficiency rate when we calculate the utilization rate for a worker we can use normal hours or included hours if you use included hours you must ensure that workers record all their working time for the time sheet period because the calculation is expressed as percentage of hours that are entered when calculating the hour utilization rate for a project project contract or customer record or category you must use included hours for calculation and then uh, comes uh, important topic about reviewing project statements these project statements are very important for a project and uh, we can create project statements to uh, have a quick snapshot or a pro for uh, the progress of a project when we run a project statement then uh, we can specify the criteria uh, in order to calculate the statement by making uh, various selections in, on the general tab on project statement page and uh, these are following like project types which need to be included transaction types or project date or ledger date or data so these are the types which can include or exclude during the project statement page in the project statement page basically in the uh, after the statement is calculated we can view the following information basically general information about a pnl structure of project profit and loss information about the accrued revenue uh, work in progress information about uh, work in progress account balances consumption information about consumed hours items expenses or payroll transaction then invoice invoice information uh, is for in various invoices on uh, or on account invoicing and then there is our rate our rates are the hours that are posted uh, to the revenue or cost accounts so now comes our main basically main uh, part of demonstration of a project management and accounting module so welcome to the demonstration for project management and accounting and uh, we will start by navigating to project management and accounting module and uh, in this module we can see there is a option of uh, project quotations so the process of uh, project management and accounting starts from project quotations and normally it uh, it is the uh, work of accounts manager in any of the organization to start with the quotation and it can, the designation can vary definitely so we will just start by uh, clicking inside the project quotation list page we'll just create uh, by uh, clicking on a new uh, command at the top so again just like uh, 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 sales quotation so there are two options like prospect or customer Pros prospect is a potential customer before becoming a customer and uh, there is option of customer as well so we will select a customer uh, from the drop down uh, uh, we can select uh, the customer whoever is asking uh, the request for quote by sending the request of course they are asking the quotation of a certain work so we'll be uh, doing here uh, the work breakdown structure tem template which we have done in uh, the previous uh, training video uh, the template which i have made there so i will be making use of that work breakdown structure in this one uh, so i will just choose uh, a 
company uh, so that can be for example this uh, logs company so this is our customer now and uh, other details you can uh, change as per the requirement so the quotation number is generated from number sequence whatever the next number is and then there is customer reference and customer requisition uh, reference which we uh, can fill here uh, that is an RFQ document from the customer request for code document and uh, remaining is the currency which is defaulted from uh, the customer record and then expiration date of a uh, uh, quotation because the quotation can be valid uh, to a certain date and uh, here it is by default it is one month period which can be filled in in the parameter and uh, similarly there are certain other uh, date values which are filled uh, pre-filled here and uh, then sales responsible sales taker just like sales quotation and then there is estimated project start date so that we can uh, just change here we can select the 4th of uh, October uh, after one week so Just after selecting, uh, uh, you can uh, click OK button and it will ask to uh, creating an opportunity record also. So I will select no in this case. So once we have uh, uh, selected the values in the dialog box, uh, so we will be uh, uh, taken to the uh, project quotation uh, page itself. And uh, a project quotation can be against a new project or it can be a new requirement in existing project for both purpose the quotation can be created so in in that case the project id can be filled in if the pro uh, project is existing one so uh, once we are in the project quotation uh, 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 project quotation form so here what we can do is uh, going to the lines and here we can see the option of uh, create quotation lines from wbs that is work breakdown structure or copy from all uh, from the existing uh, uh, quotation that is also possible so what we can do is uh, we can go to the project quotation in the at the top uh, you know and the uh, action pan and then in the maintain we can see work breakdown structure so we'll click work breakdown structure here and uh, then uh, we will be taken to the work breakdown structure form uh, where there are so many options among which we can select import option uh, which will uh, import our uh, work breakdown structure from uh, an existing template so it, it will show only the templates here uh, so we have created a template for a construction project uh, which was phase wise so we will select that template here you can refer to this one in my previous video and I will give a link also under the training video of this one. So now it is asking whether uh, we want uh, the customer uh, rates which are set against the customer or we uh, need the rates from work breakdown structure template. So I will uh, not select to uh, default it from customer. So I will uh, make it no. So it will ta be uh, taken from work breakdown structure template, uh, which I have already defined previously. And uh, now once you expand here, you can see various phases in work breakdown structure. Under those phases, there are tasks and subtasks. And uh, that also can be uh, uh, expanded from this option, expand to level four or three, whatever level of your work breakdown structure is. So automatically, uh, all the work breakdown structure will be expanded and you can see the effort in hours and then it is uh, cumulated and totaled at the uh, above level uh, uh, that is a uh, uh, you know main task and then main task or activity you can call it and then uh, there, there are various phases like planning execution uh, you know foundation exterior this is as per construction project which we have done uh, previously and uh, please remember here that predecessor I have not selected although in the actual uh, real time uh, world definitely one task is dependent upon the other so building cannot be constructed without pillars so definitely one activity is dependent on upon the other so in that way the task will automatically be uh, selecting the start and uh, end date based upon the efforts in hours so and then uh, duration uh, 
duration is also mentioned here which is uh, definitely uh, the number of days so uh, 12 minus uh, uh, 12 minus 4 will be uh, i mean excluding the weekend so it will be seven days and similarly the number of resources are already selected here and if we want to have a, a view of cost estimates uh, those are, are that view is also available here and that can be also expanded to level four for example you can see here the cost and the total cost is also uh, at the top level uh, of the, this work breakdown structure so in this way we have uh, imported our work breakdown structure and we can close now and uh, once the work breakdown structure is selected from the maintain then you can go to generate and now you can see there uh, is option of create quotation lines from work breakdown structure once we have selected imported the work breakdown structure from the template so now we will select this option create quotation line from work breakdown structure and now you can see that in the lines of uh, project quotation all uh, the uh, activity list has been uh, imported here and uh, billable or non billable and uh, project category which is only project management is selected uh, in real world it, it will definitely be different and uh, the project category will definitely will also bring the billable or non billable uh, by default and uh, that is now the, the transaction type is uh, selected as ours here and in this way uh, uh, the project date is also uh, selected here so it all depends upon work breakdown structure all the task name you can see and uh, the uh, quantity in terms of hours is uh, mentioned and the unit price and then the net amount is also mentioned now what we can do is we can uh, view the totals here uh, when we are in project quotation so that uh, now we can see here what, whatever is the cost value and uh, the quantity in terms of uh, you know uh, hours and then it, um, the margin is also there and contribution ratio and uh, we can review and after uh, I mean this is the total invoice amount uh, and the currency is also mentioned so this is very important to review the totals so so once we have reviewed it uh, then uh, what is the next step uh, basically uh, we need to just uh, uh, take in from the work breakdown structure so here is basically the project start date and uh, project end date so so once we are done here uh, then what we can do is submit this uh, workflow uh, uh, submit this quotation in, into the workflow for approval Uh, so once uh, the line manager uh, is, uh, is approving the quotation then uh, the same quotation will be sent uh, via electronically or uh, through hard copy to the uh, customer who has requested the uh, uh, through uh, using the RFQ so the quotation status once you have submitted to workflow will be submitted and once it is approved which is in this case it is uh, auto approved uh, so uh, that will basically bring it to the approval status and once it is approved then uh, we can uh, send to the uh, customer so now it is in approved status uh, from the workflow and uh, it has been done uh, so now what, what we can do is uh, go to the uh, court uh, action pen and in the court action pen there are two options in the process group one is send quotation which is in order to send to the customer uh, electronically or hard in the hard copy or if there are uh, you know iterations uh, once customer is not agreeing on certain uh, pricing then definitely revise option can be selected and any of the lines here can be changed uh, if uh, in the negotiation phase uh, uh, you are agreeing to change or revise the pricing otherwise uh, uh, that can be also uh, cancelled if uh, the uh, construction uh, company is not interested with that customer or if the customer is not interested that also can uh, that is those options are also possible so for now we will uh, just choose the send quotation uh, uh, command from here and also we will select the print quotation option 
and we can uh, review the lines which are not changeable here once it is approved in the workflow so until we uh, select the option of revision and then there are options of quotation format either it can be detailed quotation or summarized by transaction type or summarized by project category so we'll just choose detailed uh, quote now and we'll just uh, press the ok option so now we can see the project quotation uh, uh, view is available here uh, which is a detailed view and all are the project management activities basically we can also ch change it uh, to different activities which i already explained and the quantity in terms of hours and the pricing is also available so this is the total amount which uh, uh, is not involving any tax here to make it simple and uh, so this can be downloaded as pdf and uh, that can also be sent uh, via, via pdf or it can be sent to the printer itself and then uh, can be uh, sent as a hard copy so once we uh, send uh, and this is the quotation view in the pdf so definitely once we send uh, via email to the customer and the quotation status is now sent so uh, customer either accept or ask for revision and revision option is available in revise so for example uh, customer accepts this option so now uh, what what is the possibility so before that i can also show you the quotation journal is created once we have sent it and the same details are available and it can be again printed through original print or copy pre uh, preview if you if you like so so once uh, i mean uh, the customer is accepting so there are three possibilities here uh, so in the generate option if customer accepts you can choose the confirm and uh, then the option to transfer to project will be enabled and if uh, you uh, as a company are not interested then cancel option can be selected or customer is not interested then lost quotation can be selected in order to mark it as a lost uh, uh, quotation so uh, i will just choose the confirm option here to make a positive flow and uh, just uh, you can uh, take a printout uh, as a confirmation and same uh, detailed and uh, summarized by transaction type summarized by category is also available and you need to also uh, select a reason code uh, for which the customer has accepted this uh, uh, quotation so that can be a price or quality or any other thing which you think is feasible can be added also in this list so we can review also the lines here and we can also remove if certain lines are not needed uh, before I mean uh, confirming this quotation so I will just select all and uh, I will just press ok and it will again give me a printout so this is all almost similar to the previous uh, printout so I will just close it and now you can see the transfer to project option is enabled so once we have confirmed the quotation we can transfer it to the project so we'll just select it and a, a wizard will uh, start and uh, that wizard will uh, go through uh, uh, all the steps which are necessary uh, just press the next and it will uh, give you two options either create uh, either create a new project i mean already existing uh, link this quotation to the existing project against uh, an existing project but a new requirement or you can create a new project for a new requirement in a new project so uh, there is option transfer quotation work breakdown definitely that is uh, need to be yes and i will uh, select the new option and just uh, click next and now you can see the project type uh, uh, is available here and uh, basically there are uh, in my presentation i have explained there are two uh, types which are customer oriented customer focus one is time and material and one is a fixed price fixed price will definitely have a schedule invoicing and time and material is based upon the needs of uh, whatever the stages uh, i mean whenever the time and material have been consumed in terms of hours then the uh, selection of project group is also available and uh, once it is uh, need to be capitalized if there is a certain you know investment type of a project or if there is 
fixed asset uh, which is, has been i mean uh, need to be constructed and then it can be capitalized for uh, the company then it need to be work in progress otherwise it need to be a pnl account that is uh, no work in progress only profit and loss account will be selected that profit and loss uh, for the new uh, uh, accountants or the consultant uh, it is very uh, you know straightforward like revenue and expense are called profit and loss and when you talk about asset liability or capital account those are called balance sheet account so uh, we will here choose a no uh, work in progress to make it pnl uh, instead of uh, to capitalize at the end and then there is a selection uh, of a project contract id which can be existing or you can create here through plus uh, command here uh, a new contract so i have explained earlier or uh, earlier also that a single contract can have multiple projects and in that case you will you can consolidate invoicing of, uh, of for all the project which uh, belong to a single contract in a, you know tree like structure when projects are linked and then there are sub projects and uh, then further sub project basically there is a 20 character limit of a project id so you can uh, use uh, either any of the form like hyphens if you are separating it uh, with the hyphens or anything but uh, ultimately if it is uh, linked with the same contract then only you can use the consolidate invoice uh, invoicing option so uh, that means that uh, all the projects under the same contract uh, you can uh, then bill to the customer with a single invoice that is possible but if it is belonging to separate contract then it is not possible to uh, consolidate those invoicing or those bills to the customer you can just click here uh, uh, a new contract and a uh, number sequence will uh, generate a new number sequence for the contract id and uh, then def definitely there are funding types a customer will be funding or there is an organization or there is a grant or uh, on hold option is also available so funding type i will select here customer and uh, then uh, funding source can be uh, even the other customer as well so i will just uh, select uh, the same customer so so that is logs company and uh, sales uh, currency is also uh, defaulted here so i will just select ok and the project contract is uh, filled up now and uh, the customer account is also mentioned and calendar is uh, the which uh, i have created in my previous uh, training video which you can consult also for the creation of calendar uh, where we have created for the whole year uh, calendar and we have defined the weekends as well uh, which cannot be picked for the work and working times are also defined which you can consult easily in my uh, other video training video so i will just go to the next and uh, now there is option to transfer to project forecast uh, there are two options like uh, forecast or budgeting so we'll choose here the yes option and the these lines will be transferred to the project forecast and forecast model uh, are also available here like total or remaining or original forecast so uh, i will i will keep this uh, total forecast the selection as it is and then i will uh, just go to the next and just finish it in order for the uh, project to be created uh, so it is asking to default the uh, financial dimensions from the header to the line so i will select the yes option so once i have uh, uh, selected the yes option so it has created the project itself and uh, the project id is populated in uh, quotation uh, form itself in the project id field so from here i can just right click over the project id label and i can just go by view details to the project so it has already marked it transfer to the forecast so now you can see the date of creation is mentioned in the project form and project start date is also mentioned which is supposed to be the start date but it can also change here in the actual start date and now the project stage is now created and you can review the other details as well the project hierarchy is there also uh, 
uh, which you can change as per as per the requirements and then there is a budget control available here which need to be enabled as yes and then budget overrun defaults can be selected here if it is uh, to be hard uh, stop or it can be a soft stop or it can allow so there are uh, three options uh, so a budget can uh, exceed from i mean uh, the actual transactions can exceed the budget amount uh, that is allow overruns and if you are not allowing it it will go to disallow and if uh, you need only warning that is also pos possible through warn of overruns so i will uh, choose allow overruns here So now we can uh, in the pro in the project form we can go to the uh, action pane uh, of the plan and uh, there is a budget group and we can go to the project budget here uh, that will open the uh, budget form here uh, the project budget form and uh, here we can go to the import option and in the import option we can uh, select a source type which can be forecast or project transactions or work breakdown uh, structure estimates we will choose the forecast and the forecast model of total forecast so that we have already selected in uh, previous steps and uh, then there is option summarize by category which i will select as yes and uh, then it can be either batch processing which i will not enable here now and i will just press ok and uh, it will default all the uh, budget uh, available here uh, the original budget is now shown here so the total original budget is shown at the bottom and uh, also we can see the revenue uh, that is also in the original budget 514150 uh, which need to, uh, which will be the revenue part because this is a PNL uh, type of uh, project, we have not selected the work in the progress uh, account. So once we have uh, uh, imported the budget, and now we need to also submit it for approval. And uh, workflow status is also shown here as submitted so now we can see the workflow status has been uh, to the approved status and uh, now what we can do is once the budget is uh, approved here uh, we can go to the project balance uh, budget balances and we can review here the cost as well as the revenue and uh, that will be available here and it is not consumed so far so but however the whatever the revenues and costs are those are defaulted so that's it and uh, once uh, we need to just uh, close up after approval uh, budget and we are now in the project form so now uh, for entering various transactions on the basis of uh, the project we can uh, just uh, enter as per the stage wise so now what we can do is directly release the project and uh, select OK and the status of project will be now release status. So now we can enter the time uh, used against the project and uh, for that purpose we can uh, go to, uh, we just need to note down the project ID here and uh, we can go to our uh, project management and accounting area uh, and there will be timesheets just select the timesheets so we can just create a new uh, here and uh, we'll uh, just record, record the uh, date of that uh, timesheet which can be the starting from for example uh, uh, fourth so that period will automatically be selected and that can also be 
time sheet if uh, uh, those i mean uh, can be imported from the favorites as well create from favorites but uh, for now we will just uh, select this one and uh, the resource id let it be the same and uh, click okay and once you have selected it uh, then there is option to copy from which can be from favorites or assignments or timesheet so for the sake of uh, this timesheet we'll just create a new option here and the new line will be created and the project id we need to select here uh, which will be our logs company 178 uh, project id automatically the customers uh, customer is selected and the category is also selected which we have kept only one category but in case if there are various categories so uh, each line can be against different category or you can select any other category which was uh, part of that work breakdown structure so once we have selected it then there is a whole week view where we can enter uh, for example number of hours uh, and that we'll enter just for the sample purpose here uh, for each of the day whatever hours were uh, uh, spent in uh, in order to uh, do work against that construction project so once we have uh, uh, entered the time sheet here uh, we can also input multiple lines definitely uh, just like we have entered this one uh, so for now we'll just select uh, only single line and uh, uh, to make sure it, it need to be i mean the category need to be correct and the project id and then you can definitely customer is defaulted from project id and if there are certain activities those also can be uh, i mean uh, selected here uh, so for now we'll we'll just select the category here uh, not specifically any activity but activity can also be selected and then automatically the activity name will be defaulted here so that that we can also select so for example uh, i will select this foundation and uh, the category is already there activity is now selected and uh, now there is a workflow for managerial approval so I will just submit this uh, timesheet for managerial approval. So that will go to the review also and uh, that is at the top here. and. Uh, That, that will get uh, auto approved in this case but uh, definitely a manager will approve and uh, then that uh, timesheet is in the approved status so now uh, the uh, timesheet is in approved status you can observe here so that uh, there is a link also for my timesheets if it is uh, against a certain you know employee uh, so uh, for now it is not against my name so definitely it will not show here but that possibility is available also to only see the timesheets which you have submitted so for now it is approved so i will just close this one and now we'll move to the project uh, form again so this was our uh, project and it is in release status so there are various ways to keep track on uh, you know uh, through the control uh, uh, phase or control or monitoring phase of the project which is, which is the continuous activity and uh, there are certain controls like uh, can be uh, through the project statements or it can be through cash flow uh, and then there are invoice control uh, cost control and project budget balances in order to observe the transaction which have been entered so for example uh, this is our uh, uh, you know the budget and you can see now the our transaction have been entered around 8000 uh, in terms of usd based upon the our cost uh, whatever the our in time sheet have been entered so uh, 40 hours have been recorded so for that 
8000 has been already consumed so the remaining budget is also shown so in terms of revenue uh, you can see the consumed budget is there uh, which can which is chargeable and definitely uh, the remaining is also here so this is one of the way uh, and also we can uh, see the project statements in order to see the uh, in order to control the uh, you know the values and uh, here we can just select the calculate command and then we can see here the cost per uh, cost in terms of hours is 8000 again the same picture and the gross margin is also uh, shown here <clears throat> which is in negative uh, bec because the revenue has been not uh, charged so far so we have not built the uh, customer and here also you can see in the pnl that cost hours is also mentioned and total cost is also mentioned in this way work in progress will not be there because it is the pnl uh, we have selected the pnl instead of work in progress and uh, here the consumption is also noted that uh, our quantity 40 already consumed and cost our uh, rate is also defined 200 and multiply that value with hours to get the our cost uh, so far and total consumption is also mentioned in terms of payroll and payroll allocation is also there in terms of invoicing we have not yet done the invoicing to the customer and uh, our rates are also mentioned here like 40 is the quantity cost per hour 200 and the gross margin our rate is in uh, minus so far uh, so we'll uh, we can also do this uh, uh, by going to the cash flow uh, view and in the cash flow again the calculate command is available and you can uh, select multiple filter values here so I will just uh, click uh, calculate and it will show me the cash outflow but so far there is no inflow and uh, net cash uh, is minus in minus and uh, cash paid for hour is also 8000 so in this way the cash flow control uh, is also available in the statements group project statement and cash flow we have uh, seen so far and if you can go to the invoice control you can just uh, calculate and you can also define the project date here so, so far uh, our uh, quantity is 40 uh, which can be uh, which is chargeable here and uh, because the line was uh, chargeable uh, and there is op option of non-chargeable against the non-productive hours and our price average is also mentioned here so that comes by multiplying 350 into 40 so once you uh, do that I will just open the calculator multiply 40 by 350 to, uh, and this will be the value 14,000 uh, of our which is chargeable and uh, number of transactions of are 5 and uh, these are uh, per day uh, so this is the invoice control here and uh, then we can go to the cost control part and again calculate and from here also we can see our quantity our price average and then the cost value is 8000 so this is basically cost part or expense part and previous was the uh, revenue part uh, when we were seeing here uh, it was revenue part because now the sale price is 350 so we'll multiply 350 to 40 so 14000 will be charged against uh, five days uh, so far uh, the work has been done so this is chargeable and in the same way the project budget balances we have already seen the budget consumed and uh, remaining budget so now we can uh, move to the manage phase where we will be billing our uh, customer in the bill group in action plan uh, so that is uh, also possible and we can also observe posted transactions uh, through the related information so so far whatever the transaction have been uh, posted with the sales amount that is uh, mentioned in this uh, posted transaction so amount in transaction currency then the total uh, sales amount is also mentioned here and uh, 
in this way the, these posted transaction can be uh, observed uh, in the related information group of uh, and then posted transactions and uh, now there are uh, multiple options in the bill uh, we can go to the project invoice proposals uh, as well and the invoice general is also available so i will just go to the project invoice proposal and uh, from here i can just create a new invoice proposal and now uh, from here i can select uh, you know fil filters available is by a project contract or a funding source so once i select a project contract so then uh, there is option of uh, selecting the project contract so so that is a logs company here uh, so in that project automatically in that contract whatever the projects are those will be auto filtered here and otherwise if i don't select the contract here and i directly select the project also the contract value will automatically be filled up so that will be also logged in this case so in this way uh, if there are multiple projects under the same contract so that is also possible uh, to consolidate in invoice proposal here so i have now selected the project and uh, uh, then uh, the transaction types are also available to select which can be uh, charged and the invoice uh, date is also selected here uh, in order to invoice it so i can uh, select the forward date which can be for example 11th of uh, next month and uh, that's it then i can view uh, then i can uh, just click the search option here and it will bring all the hours which are uh, chargeable just let me uh, go to the so actually the uh, here the end date is uh, also need to be uh, uh, to include the transaction uh, end date so that must be october because our transactions are in october so i will just select a 10th of october so i just need to uh, select a end date which is uh, current date or the previous date for that purpose i just need to change the session date yeah and then session date and time and uh, now i can put it uh, for example uh, the date is 11th of october just select this date and now i will go back to my project management and accounting and this is for the sake of you know demonstration so definitely the transaction will be passed future transaction cannot be invoiced so just i am i have ju just done the session date and now i will move to the project so again i will uh, select the project and uh, and then i can go to the manage and project invoice proposal and create a new invoice proposal and now the end date is already uh, the today's uh, as per the session date and the invoice date is also of today and then i can select the project which is the logs company and then i can search it and it has defaulted me the hours which have been done so far for this construction project and for this customer and the details are shown also the unit price we, we are charging the customer the sale price is also 350 usd per hour so once that is multiplied so line amount is also shown here and in this way we have uh, uh, selected the you know in uh, the lines uh, in the invoice proposal and there are certain advances and deductions so those also can be uh, if there are advances or deduction those will be also available but uh, we have not selected it uh, in this case so now we can just uh, uh, select uh, all select the all transaction and then the net invoice amount will be shown at the bottom and then just we can uh, press ok so this has just generated us uh, the amount value here and now i also need to uh, show that there is an invoice format available here detail invoice summary invoice or summary by summary invoice by category that option is also available 
if you want to uh, don't go to detail and a customer is not interested in detail in wise only by a category wise uh, i mean the summary uh, wise uh, which are like a summary in wise or summary in wise by category uh, so those options are also available so the method of payment is also selected and which can be changed there either cash or check or any other option so in this way we have just created uh, the invoice proposal and uh, then uh, what we can do is we can uh, check the totals this is very important before uh, doing any invoicing after uh, you need to just check the totals whether the cost amount gross margin and if there are taxes and everything is uh, tallied and verified uh, that is a very important uh, part here and uh, also uh, the option of print preview is also available and uh, then there is option of format invoice proposal and uh, uh, that option is also available we will just select the format option and here uh, we can define our own format if you if we would like and that format can uh, have option of detail or summary and then uh, there are certain uh, transaction which you need to exclude and certain transaction which you, you need to include uh, that can also be possible here so i will just skip it and uh, i will just uh, print preview and that is just like pro forma invoice before posting this uh, invoice proposal so this is a pro forma invoice and you can see all the details as per the selected method whether it is detailed or summary uh, that is available and if I can go to the summary invoice option so what will be the format so you can see only the totals are shown uh, as per summary and if I need to select uh, you know summary invoice by category So you can see here the category is also selected and then again total if there were multiple categories those will be shown in separate lines here so so now th these three uh, different options are available in invoice format and even you can uh, uh, define uh, by going uh, to the format invoice proposal whatever invoice uh, transaction you need to include or exclude and uh, then also you can check the sale tax option if it is available in this case we have not selected sales tax option and once the customer is uh, agreed about after checking uh, with the performer invoice normally it is upon agreement with the customer then you can just go ahead and uh, and once verified the totals you can just go ahead and post the invoice and uh, there is option of uh, printing the invoice which is also important because you need to send it electronically via pdf or as a hard copy with any of the signatures from the company to the customer to uh, charge them and uh, then definitely the uh, terms of payment and the due date will be calculated upon terms of payment and this invoice date is uh, so now uh, posting was selected while writing okay So normally it will be sent to the printer or, uh, uh, or it can be downloaded uh, as a pdf and uh, sent separately to the customer via email so this is the final invoice which is of uh, 14,000 value uh, so this is category wise definitely details are not selected uh, in the invoice proposal so once we have done uh, this uh, we can just uh, close this form and uh, and we can uh, refresh here and the posted uh, invoice uh, in the invoice proposal it is shown here in the list page and i can close it and uh, now we can go to uh, the not posted transaction but uh, we can go to the control part uh, in the action pane and uh, from the invoice control we can now uh, again calculate it and uh, 
so we can see here the total invoicing is uh, already uh, shown here and invoiced amount is also shown here so also we can uh, select a filter date here uh, for the project so once we have uh, invoiced to the customer we can uh, check also in the control uh, uh, action pan uh, the project statements once again because uh, previously the negative amount was shown in the gross margin since there, there was no revenue and revenue will occur only when you uh, invoice the customer so just again once again calculate it and now you can see in the revenue instead of zero amount now 14,000 is uh, USD is uh, uh, through uh, uh, project invoice has been charged to the customer so now definitely uh, the cost per hour is uh, subtracted to give it a margin of uh, 6000 so gross margin is uh, definitely uh, uh, including the tax and uh, other things other factors so so the gross margin is here 42.9% uh, uh, 14000 and multiply by 100 so this will make 42.9 so this is how the gross margin is calculated and uh, that is uh, dividing the you know the gross margin amount with the sale uh, value so that will be then multiplied by 100 to make it the percentage 42.9 percent uh, so similarly we can uh, go to the cash flow also now once again and uh, Previously, there was uh, no cash inflow uh, and uh, only there was outflow. Now you can see there is a cash inflow of 14,000 and ca cash outflow is 8,000. So it makes net cash flow of 6,000. Uh, so invoice revenue is uh, 14,000 is uh, also shown here. And uh, cash paid for hour is uh, 8,000 which we have paid. And uh, that is also part of now cash flow control and uh, then also already we have seen the invoice control and if we can go to the cost control once again so we can uh, see whatever the changes have been uh, here so there are no changes in this one because this is a cost control part so definitely the invoice control will have the impact and if we can go to the project budget balances here so the cost part uh, this was already shown now the revenue part will have the impact here because now the revenue has been uh, through project invoice has been recorded and uh, so the the budget is now including the con uh, consumed budget here uh, for the revenues and the remaining budget is also shown So here is our you know invoice journal uh, summary invoice by category which is shown here invoice transactions which were selected and invoice proposal transaction summaries are shown here and we can also see the voucher which have been already posted and it had is it has hit our account receivable uh, account receivable uh, debit and uh, revenue is uh, credit so this is the voucher uh, posted against the invoice and we can also trace the original document which is the invoice in this case and uh, we can see the amount and uh, everything here and print preview can also be taken from this one So the same invoice preview is shown so in this way we have uh, just covered our uh, you know uh, project invoice uh, project management and uh, accounting uh, cycle which is a, a positive flow and uh, definitely I think uh, this would have uh, added into the information of uh, uh, viewers and uh, i am hopeful it is of use and uh, please if you have any feedback or any comments let me know and i will try to cover even uh, other uh, small small processes in my next videos uh, those will be part of scm or finance 
and uh, thank you guys for subscribing to the channel